What's going on everybody? Welcome to Busy Dad's Board Gaming. My name is Neil Odette and today I'm going to teach you how to play Meadow, published by Rebel Studios who provided me with a copy of the game. So let's dive right into it. To set up, place the main board in the center of the table in reach of all the players. Shuffle and place the decks marked north, south, east, and west as seen here, with north off the main board for now. That will come into play a little later. Fill each column on the main board from the respective decks as indicated by the arrow that you can see here. When that is done, it should look something like this. Place the row tokens within easy reach of all the players. You'll then look through the campfire boards and choose one matching your player count as shown by the symbols here. We're setting up for a two player game, so this is the board that we'll be using. Shuffle the goal tokens face down and then place one face up on the campfire board in each of the square locations. When playing a two player game, block two of the notches found on the campfire board with the block tokens. These will remain blocked for the entire game. Place the round marker on the first rock space of the round track. Each player will then choose a color and take the following components. Five path tokens matching the color the player chose, three bonus tokens, a road token, and a two-sided starting ground card. The player that was last stung by a bee receives the first player token and starts the game. Each player will start the game with five cards, not including the starting ground card that they were given previously. Your hand of five cards are taken in the following way. Beginning with the player to the right of the start player and going counterclockwise, each player will choose a row on the main board and add all four cards in that row to their hand. Then draw one card from the north deck. After a player chooses their cards, refill the empty slots on the main board from the corresponding decks. Repeat the process until everyone has their five cards. Before the start of round one, but after taking their hand of five cards, each player chooses the side of their starting ground card that they would like to use for the game and places that side face up in their meadow. In Meadow, you the player are a wanderer. Equipped with a map, you and your friends will be making your way through breathtaking landscapes in search of inspiration among the sights. The goal of the game is to become the most skilled observer, a title that can be won by the person who earns the most points from observing different types of animals, plants, and landscapes. Along the way, you'll also have a chance to grab some souvenirs for the road, which will also earn you points. Players will be playing cards from their hand to their meadow and surrounding area in front of them, using the symbols already shown on the cards in their meadow in order to fulfill the requirements on the cards they want to play. The game consists of six rounds in a two and three player game or eight rounds in a four player game. Players will take turns in a clockwise order playing path tokens starting with the first player until no one has path tokens left to play. During your turn, you must perform an action by placing your path token in one notch of the main board or the campfire board. You can place your path token only in unoccupied notches and the token will remain in the notch for the entirety of the round. Each path token allows you to take one of the two actions depicted, depending on whether it is played to the main board or to the campfire board. Playing a path token to the main board allows you to take a card. Additionally, you may also play a card from your hand to your meadow. Playing a path token to the campfire board allows you to take a special action. You may then fulfill a goal on the campfire board should you have the required symbols showing in your meadow. Let's first go over main board actions. If you place your path token in one of the notches on the main board, you perform the top action. After placing the token, you first count a number of spaces from the token equal to the number shown and in the direction it is pointing. 
you must take the card chosen by the token. The empty space is immediately refilled from the corresponding deck. If you use this path token, you decide the number of spaces from 1 to 4. You may then play one card from your hand into your meadow or surrounding area, including the card you just took. There are of course rules for where and when you can place cards, so let's go over those now starting with your meadow. Your meadow is the area of the table directly in front of you. This is where you'll play ground cards as well as observation cards. Ground cards depict ecosystems that are connected with the habitats of various types of animals, plants, and fungi. They have a ground symbol shown at the bottom of the card, which will be useful for, and even necessary, for playing cards in the future. When playing ground cards, place it to the right or the left side of already played ground cards. Just a note, you can only have a maximum of 10 ground cards in your meadow. The symbols shown at the bottom of the ground cards must always remain visible. Ground cards make up the lowest level of the meadow, and therefore cannot be played on top of any other cards. Ground cards, as well as most other cards in the game, will also have a card symbol. You can think of these as persistent resources so long as they remain uncovered. There are five types of ground cards. Sands, Litterfall, Grass, Wetlands, and Rocks. Next, we'll talk about observation cards. These cards present types of animals, plants, and fungi, as well as human-made creations. They represent notes that you make during your trek. On an observation card, you'll find the following. The card symbol. This lets you know what the observation card brings to your meadow in terms of those persistent resources I had mentioned. Victory points awarded for making the observation at the end of the game. And finally, underneath the card symbol, you have the requirement symbol or symbols. These let you know what you need to have showing in your meadow already in order to play the card. You can play observation cards either on top of ground cards or on other observation cards if the requirements to play the card are met. The requirements are considered fulfilled if your meadow area has all the required symbols visible. When you play an observation card, if it only has one requirement, you play the card on top of a card with the required symbol. If the observation card has two or more requirements, you play the card on a chosen card that has any of the required symbols. All the required symbols must be visible in your meadow, only then can you cover one of them. If by chance one of the requirements on the observation card is for a ground symbol or symbols, you can play the card directly on top of any empty ground card or on another observation card at the top of a column with that ground card at the bottom. You may also see cards that have requirements that look like this. Anytime you see two requirements with a slash through them, only one of those need to be in your meadow. On some cards, the requirement symbols are marked with arrows. In such a case, the card must be played in a column immediately adjacent to a column showing the indicated required symbols. Unfortunately, neither of those symbols are showing in our meadow at the moment, so we are not eligible to play this card to our meadow. If among the requirement symbols, there is a symbol marked with arrows and others without arrows, you must have all the symbols in your play area, but you can choose where to place the card. If you're missing a required symbol in your play area, as we are with this case, you may discard any two cards from your hand to ignore one requirement symbol on the card. This can be done multiple times, however, you cannot ignore all the symbols in this way. You must have at least one of the required symbols. So in this case, we'll discard two cards to ignore the bottom symbol. We have the beetle as well as the bird here and here so we can place this card in our meadow. That was everything you need to know in order to get you started in your meadow. Now let's talk about your surrounding area. Your surrounding area is the space directly above your meadow. This is where you'll play your landscape and discovery cards. 
Landscape cards depict the landscapes that the players wander throughout the game. They provide you with this symbol. Landscapes are always played in the surrounding area just above your meadow and are always played horizontally. When playing a landscape card, the following is possible. The landscape card requires only a road, as shown by this symbol. In this case, you play the card and place one of your unused roads below it. Then flip it over to show that it has been used. Or the card requires a road and other symbols, as you can see here. In this case, just like observation cards, you must have all the required symbols in your meadow area and have a road in order to play the card. In the case of landscape cards, just like observation cards, you can discard two cards from your hand to ignore one symbol on the landscape card. And this can be done multiple times. However, you can never ignore the road token symbol. Before we move on to the campfire board, there are discovery cards. As mentioned before, you can think of these as souvenirs that you find along the way. Much like other cards, these cards will provide you with a card symbol, points, and also have their own list of requirements in order to play them. Which in this case, we meet because we have a landscape symbol and a bird symbol in our meadow. Discovery cards work the exact same way as other cards in that one, they require a landscape card to be played on, and two, they sometimes require you to have other symbols in your meadow before being played. And like observation and landscape cards, you can discard two cards from your hand to ignore one symbol. And this can be done multiple times, but you can never ignore the landscape symbol. Let's now move on to the campfire board. If instead of placing one of your path tokens on the main board, you decide to place it in one of the notches on the campfire board, you perform its bottom action. After placing the path token, you take the action indicated and you have a chance to fulfill a goal. The special actions you can perform are as follows. Take any face-up card from the main board and refill the empty space with the top card from the corresponding deck. However, you cannot play a card this turn. Take two road tokens and place them in your surrounding area with the roadside face-up. Again, you cannot play a card this turn. Look at the top three cards from one deck on the main board and select one card to put in your hand. Return the other two cards to the bottom of the same deck in any order. Once again, you cannot play a card this turn. Lastly, play up to two cards from your hand into your meadow and or your surrounding area. Once again, this can be used as somewhat of a wild token in that you can perform any of the top actions when playing it into the main board or any of the bottom actions when playing it into the campfire board. If you placed your path token in one of the notches on the campfire board and performed its special action, you then have the option to claim one of the goals on the campfire board. On the campfire board, the neighboring goal tokens create pairs. If you have both symbols of the pair visible in your meadow, you may claim the space between the pair with one of your bonus tokens. Your bonus tokens are placed on the campfire board, starting with the lowest valued ones. Only one token can be placed per turn, however, regardless of how many requirements you meet. You can play a path token on an unoccupied bench on the campfire board. Doing so allows you to play one card to your meadow or surrounding area. The round lasts until players have used all of their path tokens. Then players collect their path tokens from the main board as well as the campfire board and the first player token moves to the player to the left of the current first player. Finally, the round token moves to the next spot on the round track. When the round marker passes the hourglass on the campfire board, you must also do the following. Discard all the cards from the main board and place them under their corresponding decks. Replace the south deck with the north deck. Refill the board with new cards and carry on. The game ends after finishing the last round. The winner of the game is the player with the most points from played cards and fulfilled goals. In the case of the tie, 
the winner is the player with the most discovery cards played. If there's still a tie, the players share the victory. And there you have it. That was a rundown of how to play Meadow. I'll leave links in the description below if you'd like to see a solo playthrough. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on any future videos. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links for everything in the description below. But until next time, thanks for watching and happy gaming.